Hi friends, welcome to From Ash to Air Tarot. Tonight we're going to do a reading with some of my favorite decks, so I'm excited. And I'm excited to use them together because I think they will complement each other really nicely for the reading that I would like to do for you tonight. This again is for the collective and it's a timeless reading. What do your ancestors want you to know right now? What is their guidance? What are their messages from the beyond? So I've got three piles here. The first pile is with the smoky quartz. If you choose this pile, you're group number one. Second pile is with uh, one of your ancestors perhaps uh, risen from their grave and taking a little bit of a meditative uh, posture, uh, a little yogic meditation. So if you choose the skeleton, you are group two. And uh, a candle with uh, green heart chakra energy earth energy we are in Taurus season right now so I don't know I just felt inspired even though this is a timeless reading I felt inspired to bring in something from the earth um, so if you're attracted to the green mossy green candle you are group number three take a couple seconds to just reflect on the three piles of cards and we'll get started Okay, so if you chose the Smoky Quartz, you are pile number one. Let's see what we have for you. I'm going to start with the Oracle cards. So the first card that you have is the Raven King. This is such a beautiful card. And Ether. So the, these are your first two cards right out of the um, right out of the gate, and I I'm getting a feeling that there is a very deep and um, spiritual message uh, coming from your guides in this case. Um, I would say that there's a deep connection to communicating with you through whispering through whispering through the wind or through uh, communicating perhaps um, through your dreams with quiet messages with getting a very strong air element and I feel as if your guides are very delicate in the way they reach out to you. They're not intrusive. They're, I don't know why I keep getting the word whisper, whispering, whispering. Um, it's like they whisper in your ear and they give you thoughts or ideas from these very gentle nudgings. You know, like if you've ever been out for a walk and you find a feather on your path, um, many people believe that if you find a feather, it means that uh, an angel is watching over you or an angel is making you, giving you a message, letting you know that they're there for you. But in this particular instance, let's first talk about the Raven King. Your ancestors are letting you know that this is a, a time for transmutation. This is um, a time to evolve, and it's a gateway to the inner world, the mysteries of the inner world. So the raven or the crow is often the symbol of the initiation towards attainment or enlightenment. And and ravens have also been known to be an omen for change. So this is a card letting you know 
that there are transformative energies around you right now. And it's the it's like you're right in the beginning of that path. Um, you're you need to make a choice to walk down a path of, of spiritual illumination. And it may be a little bit of a struggle right now because you're at the beginning of the journey. But that beginning is crucial because that beginning part of the journey is where you decompose your ego. You let your ego go and you let go of attachments from the material world. Um, it's like you're letting a part of yourself die, in effect. I mean, it's, it's in order for you to move forward and evolve on your spiritual path, a part of yourself has to surrender and let go and, and experience a death. And that can sometimes be a very difficult task. But um, if there's a situation that's holding you back right now, your ancestors are telling you that now is the time to let it go, to let it die, to walk away from it. It's a very, very significant message that you need to embrace a new way of seeing yourself and to go deep within your shadow nature and to find what your true nature is. This could be a dark night of the soul moment for you, groups, group one. And um, your ancestors are encouraging you to meditate, which will make this rite of passage a little smoother. Um, if you're feeling a little bit of depression right now, this is the reason. This this is the could very well be the reason why you may feel a little melancholy. You have to embrace the darker aspects of yourself in order to be transformed. So your ancestors are telling you that it's worth the effort to dig deep. It can be, how do you, okay, so how do, how do you go about doing this? Well, you've got to find a way to connect to source. So whether that's meditation or your yoga practice or lighting a candle and scrying or doing your own tarot reads or uh, reading a spiritual book. Find a discipline, find a routine and as an anchor that you can do every day so that you can get through this initiation period of change, of the letting go part, of the death part of transformation. So... You want to burn away all of the stuff that no longer serves you and step into this new experience, this new phase in order to get more wisdom, to gain more wisdom. So that's what the Raven King has to tell you. Now, your next Oracle card is Ether. And this is what, this is not simply air. Even though I, at the very top of this, got a very strong feeling that the element of air is with you and it is how your ancestors communicate with you, ether is a little bit of a different substance because ether is that stuff that the cosmos was born from. It's, um, it's a substance from the heavens, okay? And so the, it's this sort of substance or material that we're, the mystery of how the world began and what we're all born from come from. You know, this is where we come into existence. It's, it just happens. And 
I think in, in your case, this represents and a tremendous potential. And it goes along with the death that's happening for transformation. Well, here is the potential for the birth of what happens next. This is, um, there's some mystery deep within you that will be illuminated through the power of ether it's it's a, it's a it's the beginning it's the sublime it's 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 regenerative it's um and it's 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 celestial so it has a an air of success about it it's a it's a it's a it's a state of becoming to where your potential becomes actualized. So this is the first step and this is the kickoff place right after that happens. It's really showing you the first two steps on a, on a pretty grand journey and now I'm really, I'm actually really excited to see what the tarot cards have to say. So let's see what you have here. You've got the Page of Swords. You've got the Ten of Swords reversed. And the Six of Pentacles. So, actually, let me do this. Let me just, yeah, I can put these here. Well, sorry, guys, just trying to organize my space here. Okay, I want to make sure that you can see your cards clearly. All right. So, starting off with the Page of Swords, again, you know, I keep getting <laughs> a strong um, message that uh, communication from your ancestors comes through the air. It comes quickly, but gently through the air. And here we are with, you've got two swords here, which represent... Um, the element of air the suit represents the element of air and you've got the page of swords who is a messenger this is somebody who is bringing in information so i feel like your ancestors are telling you that there may be someone coming into your life that will instigate this this deconstruction um and though I'm not getting an exact clarity on whether it means there'll be a breakup, a romantic breakup, or there'll be conflict from this person, um, or whether, well, let me say this, whatever, whatever news they bring you, it is definitely going to instigate a reflection within yourself that causes dramatic, great change. So it's all good. Even though it may be miserable in the moment, it's all good. You, your, your Ten of Swords here is reversed. To me, the message here is that it may be a painful message, but it's an essential message and it's not going to linger. Because they are actually the catalyst for ending a cycle. Ending a cycle that you have grown out of. Because look what you've got here. You've got the Six of Pentacles. You've got, you know, the card of a benefactor, of somebody who, 
you know, who has material security and, and has enough to share. So I feel like, you know, it, there's a big separation here. It's like you're going from one part of your life into another chapter of your life. And this part, you know, is not going to be pleasant, guys. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I mean, not every reading, you know, should be something that that you want to hear. It should be something that you need to hear. And I feel like for group one, your ancestors are telling you that now's the time for this change to happen. And it could be brought about or it could be instigated by a younger person with a message. Let's put some um, clarifiers on and see. So we've got the Ace of Coins or the Ace of Pentacles. Let me see if I can. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna move my little guys back here because I'm running out of space on my table. All right, I'm going to have to set this up better next time. All right, let's see. Can can you see this? And you've got the Queen of Swords. And interesting that she shows up there on top of the Ten of Swords. And then, wow, a lot of people. Knight of Wands. Yeah. There's, there's like almost like a new life beginning for you with, with new influences. Your ancestors are telling you, wow, there's a whole life chapter change happening for you, group one. Um, this is, I mean, this is amazing. This is, I mean, this is opportunities. This is another page and another page bringing, but this one is bringing wealth to you. So the change that you need to make is going to bring you material success. It, that's a very clear message to me. And the Queen of Swords, to me, this could be an actual person you encounter, maybe in your work or in your career. But I also get a very strong feeling from your ancestors that they're telling you that this is an energy that you need to master. You need to master the, the um, precision of the Queen of Swords because the Queen of Swords doesn't take any crap from anybody. And perhaps this is, this is a new aspect of your personality that you need to step into right now. You need to learn how to not suffer fools and to be decisive and be forthright and have clear thought and not mince words and not get convoluted. Say it like it is. And this, this, is, this is supporting you. The Queen of Swords energy is supporting this aspect of you to come forth. And then you have... The Knight of Wands, who is truly an adventurer. The Knight of Wands is the sexiest, really, of the four, I think. <laughs> um, which makes him a little dangerous because he's a bit of a rebel. He's, uh, you know, out there uh, doing his thing. And um, he can be so impulsive that he could sweep you off your feet. Um but in this particular reading, he's very connected to the Six of Pentacles, which to me means that he might be a benefactor. He might be a new business partner. He might be a boss that gives you a promotion. He might be a new romantic partner that is very well established and is willing to help you in your career or your business. Um, but... From what I can see here, Group 1, you've got a really exciting, exciting time happening in your life right now. And um, it's really interesting because I really feel like you are going to completely do a 180. People may not even recognize you very soon. So... The biggest message, the biggest takeaway from this, your ancestors want you 
to trust spirit, to trust the messages, trust the inklings, trust the whisperings, and go with the flow and allow the parts of yourself that no longer serve to die away and embrace the new aspects that will bring you to the generosity and the success and the abundance that you deserve. Wonderful. And there we are with group one. Group two. So if you chose our little skeleton friend here, our ancestor who has come up from the grave to help deliver these messages, then you are group two. Let's see what your oracles have to say. The muse of history. Ah, and we have one of the symbols here. So I'm going to probably refer to the book on this one because I may get some messages, but I definitely want to see what the book has to say. This is the Supra Oracle, by the way. Um, very, very cool Oracle deck. All right, so the Muse of History. Well, group two, seems to me like you are a rather scholarly bunch. Um, perhaps it's time to research a little bit about where you come from and uh, who your ancestors actually are. I think they're saying they want you to find out about them. They want you to take an interest and get to know them because by learning about your family tree and your ancestors, you are going to get a key to your own life and your own path. That's kind of exciting, actually. Um, you are a storyteller. You're somebody who who knows how to weave a tale and how to tell a story through a particular perspective. The muse of history is with you, which is the muse Cleo from Greek mythology. Um, but she really wants to send the message that it's time for you to analyze past events and review the narrative that you're currently telling yourself about those past events. So maybe it's time to dig for the truth in something. Um, and to be open to changing your perspective. I think any kind of message that you receive right now is something that you should be particularly careful about, whom you share it with, whom you tell. I think you need to be a fact checker and not generalize. So your ancestors are saying, learn more about us, find out who we are. We will give you clues and we will, we will put you on the path of finding the information that you need to find so that you can communicate about something very important effectively. Are you someone who perhaps deals with the public in some way? Are you a public speaker or a professor? Whoop, sorry about that. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> Little camera malfunction there. Sorry about that. Um, There's a lot of healing potential with this card. 
You might even want to start journaling and writing, writing down your own thoughts from your own life. Start a memoir. Yep. That's what I'm getting. Start a memoir. Share. Share your life experiences. Tell your story. What could that mean? Maybe maybe you're somebody who's an influencer online or maybe you have a business that's online in which you help others or maybe you're a psychologist and your own personal experience somehow can help you to get game perspective and compassion for others. I don't know exactly, but I think anybody in group two that falls into that category, the message here is to call on the muse, Cleo, for guidance connected to storytelling and history and learn about your own. Very cool. Now your other oracle card. It's almost like, well, first of all, the first thing that, that, that comes to me about this card is the fact that it seems to deal with your roots, your root chakra. The color red is associated with the root chakra. It somehow feels to me like it's giving it's giving you a mirror in a way. It's like it's like it's holding up a mirror into your views about where not only not not just where you come from but your how you cope with your survival with I think it's it's telling you in some way to be more grounded because Well, let me read what, what the book says. The book is saying, the whole story is here gathered up inside of us. Bridges over great dark chasms of the soul are crossed. Wild storms of our heart endured. A singular path is found. Hardly asleep, hardly awake. We encounter in our dreams the only path that gently unfolds us. So it, it's, a, it's, a, it's another message about about history, about where you come from and where you're going. It's sort of a destiny. It's like a, it's like a quest in a way. I'm, I'm getting the feeling that it's inviting you to take a look into the past in order to move forward on your own quest in your life. Let's see what your tarot cards have to say. So we've got the Five of Pentacles reversed. We've got the Empress reversed. Hmm. The Nine of Pentacles. I'm having so many problems tonight with my aesthetic here. I apologize. Okay. I just want them to be very clear. All right. So, yeah, finding this information out about who you are and where you're from will give you a, a clear insight into 
the troubles that you may be encountering right now in your life. There's a little bit of a um, little bit of despondency here. I'm getting that things haven't really been going as smoothly for you and your ancestors want you to know that um, that they can help you to get back on track to following your destiny to what you're destined and meant to do and be in this life um, there's a sense that your creative power is stunted right now it's um, it's being sort of de depleted in a way and they're saying though that fulfillment is right around the corner here so similar to group one you're kind of you know you're in this this another transition period but then again isn't that what all of life is for all of us we we all go through ups and downs life is never a linear experience and um Ironically, we, in order to be able to grasp the concept of time, have created a linear experience of time. But in reality, I think that much of what we experience is cyclical. The nature, I think, of the universe of existence is cyclical. It's a, it's a cycle. And... Um, Therefore, it ebbs and flows. So it would make perfect sense that sometimes, you know, you're going up, uh, climbing up on the roller coaster ride, and then sometimes you're going down. So let's see what the clarifiers have to say here. Okay, this is becoming much clearer for me right now. Okay, so we've got Justice, we've got the Emperor, these are big cards, guys, and we've got the Five of Swords. Yeah, so Group 2, I think you're involved in some kind of legal battle or... A battle about personal integrity. Someone has perhaps challenged your personal integrity with um, with this with this justice card in the reverse. You you feel like you're getting the short end of the stick here, big time. I don't know. Maybe you're going through a divorce, or maybe it's an inheritance, and other people have um, shortchanged you from your share. I, I don't know exactly what it is, but you're definitely going through that crisis right now. And with the emperor here on top of the empress reversed, I feel like there's someone of authority who is blocking you. And that's why the creative energy is just... <laughs> You know, like a raisin. You lost all your juice. This because of this person. This person who has kind of got dominion over you right now. And then, but then look at this, guys. This is this is just so amazing. You've got the five of swords reversed right on top of this nine of pentacles, which is a complete confirmation that there's gonna be a resolution here. I mean, this is this is not going to last, and 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 you are going to get what's coming to you. Look, you are going to get what is coming to you. Right here, so there will be a reversal, and you will be then back on your path of destiny. I get a big, you know, the more I'm looking at the cards, and the more, especially that I'm. I'm looking at this this um this particular card. I'm really getting the feeling that his, this might have to do with some sort of 
inheritance or family fami family dispute some sort of family dispute and that's why your ancestors want you to go back and look stuff up about them to get some answers wow it's really cool this is a very specific message because they want you to be empowered so that you can get to here and reverse the situation and be back in line to inherit the throne, so to speak, you know? Very interesting group two. All right. Group three. So if you picked the candle, you are group three. We've got laggy of the soul, or I'm sorry, lattice of the soul, <laughs> laggy, lattice of the soul, and forgotten. Wow, these are intense readings tonight, guys. I mean, it's all good. It's all good. You know, we can't be afraid of the shadow because that's as much of a part of life as all the good stuff, right? But this, these decks that I chose tonight are, you know, they don't, they're not airy fairy. They give you intense reads. So, um, and in a way, to me, they kind of helped to sort of um, underscore the the weight of getting messages from your ancestors because I think that's a serious thing. Anyway, so. Lattice of the Soul. By the way, this is from the Divine Muses Oracle deck, which is an Oracle deck that I'm absolutely in love with. Um, I haven't had it, had it for too long, so I'm not super um, advanced in reading the deck yet. But um, It's just such a profound, it's so, I mean, the book that comes with this deck is uh, pretty intense and just a joy to read. It's just so well done. This deck was so, such a labor, you could tell it was such a, a labor of love. Um, it was created by uh, Marie Bento and um, yeah, she's, she's really amazing. So I'm going to refer to the book on this one, guys, because I want to, I want to, you know, get a little bit more in depth here. So the Lattice of the Soul is purification. This is a whitening phase of the alchemical process. So it's often called the Hour of Gold. It's when we first encounter the seed of the new self following the decomposition in the blackening phase. We encounter purification after the death. It is a washing away or ablution of the putrefied parts of ourselves, which we no longer need to take on with us to our path of wholeness. The lattice of the soul is where we begin to feel the body spirit. We sense a glimmer of light. The struggle that we once found in the Raven King falls away. Ah, ka, ha, ha. Okay, so this card clearly comes directly after the Raven King, which group one had. Very interesting. So it's here that we know that it was worth the fight and we endured with our shadows. We better understand that our demons can be conquered and we can see more clarity of our purest form. We gain further awareness that beyond the struggle lies gold, our inner gold. So you're a little bit further on the path right now than the group one folks because you have gone through the transformative process and you have ended up here which is the next steps the 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 very beginning of the new you you're completely encumbered now and your old self is completely gone and what's revealed is your pure potential so you are at the, that, that starting place, which is amazing. So you're, you're, you're ready to just burst on through. And I think in this case, before I read 
the message of forgotten. I want to go right into the tarot. I'm just getting a, an intu intuition, an intuitive guide. So we've got the Page of Wands. We've got the Sun. We've got the King of Pentacles. Now I'm telling you, you guys are bringing out some really deep, intense stuff. It's very cool and very exciting and interesting. All right, so let's let's take this into consideration here. So, just like the two groups before you, you guys are are you know, you're hanging in there, but you're it's a bumpy path. It's a bumpy path. Your ancestors are acknowledging that though you may have that spark of inspiration that the Page of Wands signifies, you're a little unsure. You feel a little wobbly about it. You, you know, you're not 100% uh, confident in yourself. And though you can see the potential though you can see that that this whole process, you just came out of the dark night of the soul and you see the sun. You know, the sun is out now. It's almost like it's like you can't believe it. Like it's too good to be true. Like you're not sure that you can, that you're able to maintain this new you. But what they want you to know is look what's right around the corner here. King of Pentacles, you have mastered the material world. The King of Pentacles to me is mastery of the material world. Someone who has lived a life and has earned, is self-made and has earned every penny. And, th and this is where you are. You are... You're heading into a very fully formed version of yourself. You just got to trust it. Oh, okay. So this makes sense. Now as we put the signifiers on here, you have the, the Eight of Cups. You've walked away from something to go through this, which makes sense because in order to have that kind of transformative change, you know, we do have to walk away from parts of ourselves or people or places or things that don't serve us anymore. But there's a little bit more going on here. You really went your own way, like the lone wolf. And there's a sense that... When I, when I look at this with the Page of Wands, it's almost like you felt a little bit abandoned and that you were the one who really went out and struck out on your own with your own idea. And um, everyone kind of was like, you're crazy, but you did it. You, you stuck to your guns And you, you literally had an awakening because then we, you have the Four of Swords where you really did have to go through a period of rest. But when we see the Four of Swords in the reverse position, you're coming out of that rested phase. So, you know, you didn't do this blindly. You made all the right decisions. And... Your last clarifier is the Ace of Cups on top of your King of Pentacles, which to me means emotional freedom, a completely new emotional place, the beginning of a new emotional cycle. It's very, very cool. Yeah, I think that... All of you, all three groups, have somehow 
uh, mirrored each other in a way, or you had a kinship. Uh, and, and whomever is listening to this reading, you know, there's no mistake that you were meant to listen to it. And it's almost like the ancestors that are coming through and speaking are, um, are somehow like familial in a way. I get the feeling like they're somehow connected to each other because they're giving very similar messages to each group, but with slightly different stages on the path. Um, th this is like becoming a very intense reading. Um, very complicated. It's really interesting. Okay, we need to get to your last card, uh, which I skipped over for a reason that I can't quite explain. I just got this sudden intuition that I, I needed to wait and read that last. So, The Forgotten. I'm going to refer to the book on this one. Wow, this is like, you can't make this stuff up. So this is ancient origin, curiosity, exploration, discovery. This is <laughs> how the forgotten story begins anew. So what did I say? You're, you, you know, you're, you're, you've, you're stepping into this new you. You're further along on the path. And... It's again, uh, <laughs> your ancestors are again kind of saying, especially the group three, hey guys, you know, remember us? <laughs> you know, we're where everything started. So it's asking you to respect your past, respect this whole journey that you took. Um, don't forget the things that you learned on the journey. Don't let it slip from your consciousness. It's ancient wisdom. And you've earned it. Look, at you've earned it to become the king of pentacles, okay? And um, to get the cup of uh, the ace of cups, you know, in your hand, in your grasp. You've earned this. This was, this was hard work to get here. And don't forget that journey. Don't forget all the small steps that you took to get to this. Because sometimes, you know, we get here and we forget a lot of stuff. Because we're, we're just in that place, which is great, being present with all that we've accomplished. But the wise person knows that because life is cyclical, we can never rest on our laurels. We can never be too comfortable to where we lose the perspective and the sense of what it took to get there. So they're telling you to, to not forget them, to not forget where you come from, to not forget all the stops on the path along the way. That's your message, group three. Wow. Well, I want to thank you because you guys inspired some amazing, amazing readings tonight. And uh, let me just show you the books of the Oracle decks that I was using. So this is the Super Oracle by Usi. Um, they also make Pagan Other Worlds, which is a, another deck that I use tonight. I'll list them all in the description below. Um, I highly recommend both of these Oracle decks. They're independent decks, but they're amazing. And then, of course, Divine Muses Oracle um, by Marie Bento. Uh, fabulous, fabulous, fabulous Oracles. As you can tell, though, very deep. <laughs> and you can see by the books... Uh, you know, if you love to study uh, a new system, I highly recommend these two oracles. They're not for the faint of heart. You know, they, they really do take some 
some work and some thought. They're, they're new in my collection, but I was excited to use them tonight. And um, I want to thank you guys for listening and liking and subscribing. And please, if you have any comments, don't hesitate to write them below. And I will see you all next time.